too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot. Oh, whoa, all right. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything. Welcome back to Tesla's Wild. If you're new here, my name is Colin. Thanks for stopping by. Please consider liking and subscribing below. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support. One quick reminder, there's a comment pinned below with timestamps so you can hop to the video and view the portions most relevant to you. All right, so it is Wednesday, July 24th. It is my birthday. Anyways, we did get a new software update for Nico, my Tesla Model 3 Performance 2018 on hardware 2.5. This is the 2019.24.4 update. This update came with a couple awesome features as well as bug improvements and just overall convenience factors that I'm really excited about and want to share with you guys. So if this sounds interesting to you, make sure you stay tuned. We're also going to do our autopilot testing on Deer Creek Canyon and see how that goes with this new software. So we'll see you guys shortly. All right, so as you can see, we do have the what's new in this update page pulled up here. The first thing that we see is Kadimo adapter support. So this now enables you to charge your Tesla with Kadimo chargers. And as long as you have the adapter, you're now capable of doing that, which is very very cool. Uh, the next thing is a very small thing, but sketchpad improvements. You're now able to go through and undo multiple pieces of your drawing. You weren't able to do this before, and now you can control color saturation on your drawing as well. They have also improved the owner's manual. You can now type in search terms and quickly move search results by tapping the arrow buttons. So that's pretty cool. Let's check out the owner's manual improvements really quick here. So we're going to open up the owner's manual and there's now a and there is now a search magnifying glass right next to the owner's manual at the top here. So let's say you want to type lights. You can type in lights in the search, hit enter, and it will show you 10 results. Supposedly slightly buggy still. This doesn't look exactly like I think it should, but uh, you can now use these arrows over here to parse through the search terms. As you can see, they're highlighted in orange and yellow on the left there. So that is a new feature of the owner's manual, which is really cool. So there are a couple of actually hidden or unmentioned features in here that I found really cool as well. So the first is it will now tell you when your USB drive for the dash cam is full. Mine has been full for a long time now. I think it, at least I thought it's been full. I've had the gray X and I'll show you guys this shortly. So now you actually get a warning that your USB drive is full. Uh, I would have liked to see this happen around 90% full or 75% full, more of like a warning. Hey, your USB drive is filling up. Maybe think about clearing it out instead of when it is actually full, but it's still cool that they now tell you. So let's take a look at this. All right, so as we can see, my dash cam icon is grayed out. I always thought this was because it was full, but I was never sure, and I was just too lazy to take it out. But we can also see that I have a red exclamation point over here. So if we tap that and open it up, we can now see there is an, a warning message or a notification that the dash cam USB drive is full. So that's really cool to see. Now they let you know that that is exactly the problem that you are experiencing. So the final improvement that they don't tell you about, but I am super stoked for is now you can permanently turn off ELDA or emergency lane departure avoidance. So I've made about four videos on this talking about its issues, how it's improved over time, and it still gives me problems every now and then intervenes when it absolutely should not. It's a phenomenal safety feature and I just wish it was better, you know, and it will be better in the future. But one of the major problems with it is that it was automatically enabled at the start of every drive. You physically could not permanently turn it off. You could turn it off for a single drive, but the second you got out of your vehicle, locked it and got back in, it would re-enable itself. Okay, so going into the UI under autopilot, it's in the same location right beneath lane departure avoidance. You can see that I do have it turned off here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get out of the vehicle, lock it down and check it again. Let's keep it open here. So let's get that done. 
Okay, so now if we go into the UI again and go into autopilot settings, we can now see that emergency lane departure avoidance is still off. Obviously, it is a phenomenal safety feature, and I really hope to keep it on in the future. Just for now, I think there's still bugs that they're working on, and it still does intervene in situations that I wouldn't consider appropriate. There's a lot of cool convenience factor and just general sort of updates that they did in this update, which I'm really happy with. So from here, we're going to go out and test autopilot on Deer Creek Canyon, see how well it does, and we're going to close this video out afterwards. So we'll see you on the road shortly. All right, so you guys will recognize this as my last video where autopilot was struggling deciphering between a couple of lanes up here. So we're gonna see how well this goes. We're at 45 again, which is where it struggled heavily last time. Coming around this turn. And it does the same exact thing. All right, so we have just made it to Deer Creek Canyon here. We're gonna go to the curvy parts of the road and turn on autopilot and see how it does on 2019.24.4. Please always remember that if you're trying to demonstrate a capability or a issue or an issue with autopilot that you are demonstrating it safely. All right, so we have it set at 40 miles per hour. We are coming into our first turn here. Slowed down very well. We're taking the turn at 30 miles per hour, 29. Right turn, ooh, a little bit of a late turn on there. and it is completely monitoring its own speed. As we can see, I have it set at 40, but it's slowing down for turns and taking them at 30, wherever it sort of feels comfortable. Very good on a poorly marked turn. The turning doesn't feel quite as smooth as it usually does. It seems like it's more a series of straight lines as opposed to a smooth turn, and sometimes it's oversteering a little bit. Woo! All right, that hasn't happened before. <laughs> This is definitely not the smoothest revision of autopilot that I've ever tested. No real major mistakes, but uh, yeah, it seems to be reacting pretty late to these turns, coming into others too hot, and just having more trouble than usual. Here comes the tough rock wall left turn. <laughs> One always makes me nervous. Tight turn, tight turn, tight turn. Yes! And... nope. <laughs> okay, so that one, there was absolutely no chance it was going to make that. As you heard by my passenger, um, there was a little bit of nervousness going on. <laughs> yeah, that one, it always struggles. In the last update, I'll probably throw a clip of it right now. It did a very good job. It slowed itself down and nearly made the turn, and that is a very, very sharp right turn. Um, those are the two biggest difficulties of this road for autopilot. The rest is fairly routine, um, but yeah, this time it did not do a good job. It came into that turn way too hot, and it's a blind corner, so I don't want to let it fail into the opposite lane, because I don't know if anybody's going to be there. And this is the turn that's pretty incredible. It does slow itself down. Too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot. Oh, whoa, all right.
right. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's never come into that turn that hot, but uh, did still keep it under control. It definitely went over the lines. Got a biker here. And like always, this is where we end our autopilot testing. So I'll be back with you with the point of view in a few minutes here. All right, so there we have it. We went over 2019.24.4. There's a lot of really cool features added in here, as well as a lot of convenience things that have been fixed um, or, you know, improved upon. Uh, there's a couple bugs that have been introduced. Honestly, autopilot, that was the worst I've ever seen it perform on Deer Creek Canyon. I'm actually not very happy with how it did. It was very jerky. The turns were not smooth at all. They were more of like a combination of straight line points instead of a smooth continuous turn. Uh, it was reacting to turns extremely late, coming into turns way too hot, and in some cases it was just full-fledged, no slowing down, and in the turn that I was most excited about seeing in the last update, it nearly made it around this very sharp turn, and this time it just like blew right past it and completely screwed it up. So not very happy with that. The autopilot has not improved with this update, unfortunately. Um, yeah, not much else to say. You guys saw it in the video, but the rest of the features are phenomenal. Showing you that your dash cam USB drive is full is great. Allowing you to permanently turn off ELDA is also great. The sketch pad is like, yeah, you know, whatever. I don't really use it. Some people will probably create some awesome works of art on there, but I will not. You can undo multiple uh, actions that you did in the past. And the Kadimo support, which is great. I know a lot of people are really excited about that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please make sure to smash that like and subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. As always, I've got a lot of new content coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned, and we will see you guys next video.